So here's a Windows handheld I absolutely adore. This is the GPD Win 4 sent to us from Geek Buying. It's the 6800U variant, and we want to know, will it compare up against the Asus ROG Ally, the AYN Loki, as well as the Valve Steam Deck? The Win 4 has some extra touches that make it a bit easier to use than other Windows handhelds. But is it worth your money, even with the recent price drop to $759, or do you wait for the new 7840U revision that's coming to Indiegogo in August? We need to know, how does it do with retro emulation? How does it do with modern gaming? We're going to test it out and do a quick review of the Win 4 from GPD, a handheld Sony wish it made. I'm Stubbs, and we're gonna hop in. And go ahead and click that subscribe button to stay in the know for all of your favorite retro handhelds. So here we go, the GPD Win 4 in action. Let's unbox it and see what we've got. Gone charger. This fun little lanyard. Actions speak louder than words. A very flimsy, cheap screen protector that's not gonna really cut it. That feels really nice. Chunky. Good weight. I like the weight balance more than I did on the GPD Win 3, I can say that. Joysticks are a little small for my liking. Might put some Skull & Co caps on this. I think I like the joysticks a bit better on the GPD Win 3. Enhance. I like the bump outs on the back. Not a huge bump out. Maybe not as ergonomic as the Loki, but not bad. M1 and M2 are in a good spot. Not gonna accidentally press those. L2 and R2 are an analog feel. They feel pretty good. L1 and R1. Clicky feels like a Vita L1 and R1 shoulder buttons. D-pad feels like a Vita D-pad. Nice and clicky there, but a soft, a soft clicky. Again, feels like Vita face buttons, same as we had on the GPD Win 3 and the GPD XP and XP Plus. We got good play and travel on that. Here it is right down the center. Yeah, the D-pad feels really good. I can't wait to try that out in some fighting games. Here we have, I believe, a fingerprint reader. And here's that optical touch mouse. That'll be fun to try out. Start and select. Speakers are not optimally placed as your thumbs and hands might cover that as you're gaming, so you're gonna have to be sort of careful to play maybe like that, so you don't get muffled sound. And then one USB-A port up top, 3.5 headphone out, a USB-4 port, volume down and up, power button on the bottom, USB port, and you have this place for the lanyard down there, that's fun. And aha, and a hidden menu button right there. Cool, now here's the main attraction, a physical, keyboard. Oh, that's so cool. Way better than the Win 3. The Win 3 had this touch backlit keyboard that had some haptic feedback as you press it, but this is actual tactile keys. And I hear this is light up, so I'm excited to take a look at this. Wow. That is nice. I love the matte white plastic on this. There's also a black skew, but I have to say, now this isn't pure white. This is kind of like a faded gray almost, and it looks really good. And it looks almost like a actual successor to the PlayStation Vita. This is like the Vita that I would have loved to see have seen from Sony. This is so cool looking. Yeah, the weight again is nice. I like the metal and aluminum line that runs through here. Looks like there's a micro SD card slot on this side, and then a toggle switch between gamepad mode and mouse mode or windows mode. Now this is the 16 gigabyte, one terabyte model. Exhaust there and intake here. Let's do a quick, uh, that's some good vent smell. We gotta try it with it on though. The configurations you can buy pre-configured are 512 gigs up through two terabytes as well as RAM being either 16 or 32 gigabytes. As far as specs go in this, again, this does have the AMD Ryzen 7 6800U. We've seen it time and time again on so many handhelds. For a display, we have a six inch 1920 by 1080, 16 by nine LCD screen. This is not OLED, but it is a nice and crisp LCD. Excited to see that in action. Battery, this has a honking 45 0.62 watt hour battery averaging you about an hour and a half up through six and a half hours. I'm excited for that. Features Wi-Fi 6, micro SD card slot, and that USB 4 slot up top. It is thick. Let's do some size comparisons really quick. Here it is next to the AYN Loki. And the Loki is thinner. The joysticks are so much more comfortable than the Loki. and has fun LED lights, although this does have LED lights in L1 R1. So this is quite a bit heftier feeling, but it's smaller too, look at that. Almost a full inch on either side smaller. 
I would say this is a better feel and heft ergonomics than the GPD Win 3, but I gotta give a point to the Loki because we got more of a bump out here. D-pad is comparable. Rogue Ally definitely spreads its weight out a bit more, but it is a bigger screen. Quite a bit thinner. It feels lighter. D-pad definitely like more on the on the Win 4. Mmm, joysticks feel better to me on the Ally. Face buttons, I like the Ally better because they're a little bit easier to press down. And they're mushy and bigger. Might be a little bit better on the Win 4 to me. Yeah, obviously this is way more compact. Possibly the slightest bit pocketable too. And then the tried and true champ, the Valve Steam Deck. This thing is the most comfortable. 8 inch screen. But it is nice that it has physical touch pads and super comfortable and ergonomic placement of just about everything from the face buttons, which feel great. The D-pad, got to give it to the Steam Deck here. Weight-wise, the Steam Deck is probably a little heavier, but it's so well balanced throughout that uh, it's hard to tell. This, you got your all your weight all compact. I've told Steam to start when Windows starts and launch in big picture mode. Here's something kind of cool. So right from the Steam interface or anywhere on the OS, you can swipe up from the lower right and pull up your brightness, your speaker, your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, battery saver mode. Swipe from the middle and you have your start menu. One downside of the Win 4 in comparison to newer devices like the Loki, like the Rogue Ally, is that there is no built-in GPD software that comes up via a simple button press. We're gonna need to configure that in the hotkeys, maybe on M1 and M2 right here. Here's another nice thing. If you swap over to mouse mode, then the right stick becomes the mouse. L1 is left click and R1 is right click. Also, you have this little optical touch mouse area where you can glide it around with your finger or thumb and then pressing in left click. So here we have the motion assistant and I've set this to run all the time at startup. There are more advanced tools if you go into the GPD devices discord where they've developed something called auto TDP. We can up this all the way to 28 watts which is nice and beefy. The other GPD app here is called Win Controls and it looks like there's a mouse model customization option and you can customize the back buttons, great. But yeah, the screen looks really crisp and really nice. One thing I wanted to mention earlier is that while these are tiny joysticks, I like the texture on them, satisfying texture all the way around and on top, a little bit of grit for gripping it. So let's play some games. Ha ha! 
Windows is usable on a handheld. Take my melon! Fuck! Yeah, pee on it. Alright, contra test. We're good. Well, what do you guys think? GPD Win 4 is pretty A-OK -okay in my book. In fact, it's probably my favorite Windows handheld right now, mainly because super comfortable, small form factor, good weight, good balance, optical mouse, navigating windows with actual keyboard, alt tab through stuff, Alps joysticks feel really good. I like the gritty texture. I like the matte white shell on it. D-pad and face buttons work really well. The 6800U is a battle hardened friend by now. We know what it can do. Hey everybody, sorry, I need to cut in here for a moment. I learned that there was a new GPD Win 4 coming out, a 7840U. This one's going to be up for pre-order in August on Indiegogo. Remember, the 6800U does have optimized drivers, lots of community work put into this. The 7840U version is also going to be ditching the USB-A port but in its place, they're gonna add an OcuLink port, which allows you to connect their new eGPU if you wanna have some extra boost. So is it worth getting the 6800U knowing that the new version's about to come out? I don't know, that's for you to say. I do like this version because of that USB-A port. However, the prospect of docking it and using that eGPU is pretty cool. But these Windows handhelds do depreciate. There will be always the next better, best thing. It's hard to keep up. So pick one that you're okay spending the money on, hold on to it and use it for as long as you can. You don't need to refresh buying these every single year. Having said that, let's hop back to the video. Battery life on this has been awesome. I've been getting anywhere from four hours on average all the way up to six and a half hours if I keep those TDPs very low, and I'm talking four watts. This is just a cut above so many other Windows handhelds that I've used. I mean, this is basically what Sony should have done. This is a Vita in 2023. Like, this is so, so good. I wish the face buttons were mushy and a little bit bigger, and the D-pad, maybe if it was closer to the Loki. As far as pricing goes, they are only $799 if you go through our coupon through Geek Buying. But I would have to say, so far, this is my favorite 6800U and my favorite Windows handheld. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. I know that's annoying, but it really helps the channel. Take care of your handhelds, everybody, and take care of each other.